Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 1st, 2023 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. I started off the day by meeting my friend Kim at the Braddock Bay East Spit at around 6 a.m. for sunrise. There wasn't much songbird activity, hardly any warblers around, so we just made our way out to the end of the spit to watch out over the lake for water birds and other interesting things migrating across. Around 6.30 a.m. we had this black-bellied plover pop up off of the barrier island and fly away. And a good field mark for black-bellied plover is this black patch in the underwing area. And just after 7 a.m. I spotted this bird coming across towards us. So what we see here is an exhibitor because we see that long tail. But look at these extremely broad wings and also the white eyebrow. So this is a juvenile northern goshawk. And this was a big one. And you could tell just from the way it was flying, the speed of the flap, and the way it moved that it was a big bird. Again, as it started to come towards us, look at all that streaking underneath and look at the white eyebrow. And as it came across, we had plenty of time to enjoy watching it. And we knew that this would probably be one of our best views ever of a northern goshawk. And as it got closer, again, you can see that white eyebrow above the eye. And also that the streaking goes all the way down to the undertail area. And at the last moment, it banked up and came almost directly over top of us. And you can see it was obviously staring down at me, trying to figure out what I was. And thankfully, it determined that I was not edible and it continued on its way. And again, look at that streaking. It's not just the streaking on the upper breast like we see on Cooper's hawks, but it ex extends all the way down here to the undertail coverts. Also notice the somewhat different banding on the tail than we see on the Cooper's hawks and sharpshins, where it's more even bands. A little bit more messy looking on the goshawk. We had some nice groups of blue jays migrating this morning. Here's a nice breeding plumage Bonaparte skull. A few weeks ago we were seeing a lot of Bonaparte skulls, but now their migration is sort of winding down, so we only had the one today. Here we have some kind of turn that flew by, and really I'm so confused. There's been a turn on the other side of the bay that's been identified as a Forster's turn, but I, I don't know if that identification has been completely settled yet or not. So the question is, is this the same bird as that one? And if it is or if it isn't, what is it? Is it a Forster's turn or is this a common turn? So um, I had a long day today and haven't had the brain power to really dig into Sterna turn identification. So um, I guess for right now, people have told me that it's either a Forster's turn or a common turn. Um, I guess common turn is the more likely of the two, but there's that one on the other side that's being called a forester. So anyway, for right now, this is a bit of a mystery bird and maybe we'll get it settled at some point in the future. And here's a look at the upper wing of that same bird. Shortly after eight o'clock, a pretty decent flight of broad-winged hawks started to pick up. We had moderate to strong southwest winds the whole day. So uh, raptors got up early because there was a little bit of morning sunshine so I think everything was itching to go after a few rainy days and uh, we had a pretty big flight pickup. At 8.30 a.m. we moved the count over to the platform and at first it was partly sunny and there were some gloomier periods and a few rain showers as well but then after those rain showers passed it really turned into a pretty nice day with um partly to mostly sunny skies, a lot of big puffy clouds, and uh, just a really pleasant day overall. And the forecast had said that it would be uh, maybe a little bit of morning sun and then overcast, but really we ended up with a lot of sunshine today. So uh, combined with those southwesterly winds, we had a really good flight. Here we have a hawk, and just from the shape we know it's a budio. It looks like a rather bulky one. We see dark patagial bars and a pretty thick belly band. And we also see a dark trailing edge to the wing and a red tail. So we know that this is an adult red-tailed hawk. And it's on the more heavily marked end of the spectrum. Got kind of a dark throat, really heavy belly band. So this might be the northern subspecies or Abieticola. The winds were a little bit strong and it was kind of gloomy. So it uh, wasn't really good conditions for thermals to develop. But the broad wings didn't care. They were willing to just 
kind of push through low and uh, just do some flapping and not rely on those thermals, just push through. And this broad-winged hawk is an adult. You can see the brown barring underneath and the dark trailing edge to the wing and the dark tail with the white band on it. And pretty much all of the broad wings that we're getting still are adults. I don't think I saw any juveniles today. So we're still in that big push of adult broad wings. And then later on, over the next few weeks, they'll transition into the juveniles migrating. Here we have a juvenile Cooper's hawk migrating. You can see that brown teardrop streaking on the underside. And the tail's a little bit ragged, so it looks a bit squared off. But if we had a better look, we would see that the outer tail feathers are shorter than the central ones. Here's another adult broad-winged hawk. So remember that broad wings are beautios, and they're kind of small and compact. And a lot of times when they're in a glide posture like this, the trailing edge of the wing is really straight. The local Cooper's hawk continues to harass any turkey vulture that flies through his airspace. And here's another look at that adult Cooper's hawk. We had one sandhill crane today, but it was pretty high and didn't give us a very good look. Here's another beautio, and it looks like it's big and bulky. We see those dark patagial bars in the belly band, but we do not see a dark trailing edge to the wing or a red tail. So this is a juvenile red-tailed hawk. Here's a songbird that's yellow underneath with a black bib and a really stuttery flap. Holds its wings kind of level and just dips down in a very stuttery way when it flaps. So this is an eastern meadowlark. And speaking of larks, here's a horned lark. And we had a small number of these today. And we really haven't been seeing that many horned larks, so it was nice to see a few of them. Uh, we get quite a few of them earlier in the season, but it's been a while since we've had any. Another common songbird that we're seeing fly over this time of year is yellow-rumped warblers. And the yellow patch here on the side is really distinctive. Uh, good way to pick them out when they're in flight. Here's another hawk, and we see that long tail and rounded wings. So we know that this is an excipiter. See a relatively large head and brown teardrop streaking, mostly on the upper breast. So this is a juvenile Cooper's hawk. Here's another beautio. And again, we see those dark patagial bars in the belly band. So we know that this is a red-tailed hawk. And it's got a dark trailing edge to the wing and a red tail, so we know it's an adult red-tailed hawk. With the strong winds today, a lot of swallows were staying low to the ground. Here we have a purple martin, which is our largest species of swallow. Here we have another beautio, and we can see those dark patagio bars in the belly band. So we know that this is a red-tailed hawk, but it's a juvenile, because again, it does not have that dark trailing edge to the wing or the red tail. We also see this uh, kind of translucent square in the inner primaries, another good field mark for juvenile red-tailed hawks. Here we have an adult bald eagle who has a fish, and it looks like it's uh, <laughs> carrying it in a little bit of a funny way. You know, a lot of times when you see things like ospreys carry fish, they have the fish oriented in a perfectly straight way, but this eagle doesn't care. He's just kind of got it by the head, letting it dangle down. Let's take a look at what we see on this raptor. So if we look at the shape, we see that it's holding its wings up in a V or a dihedral. We see that the wings are relatively pointed. It's got a somewhat long tail. and We can see a bit of a white rump patch. We also see an owl-like facial disc. So all of those things combined make this a northern harrier. And we know it's one of the brown type harriers, so either an adult female or a juvenile. When we look at it, we see it has virtually no streaking underneath and no markings in the patagial area. So this is a juvenile northern harrier. Here we have another bird holding its wings up into a V or a dihedral. We see that it has a red head with no feathers. And we see it's got a two-toned underside with a dark body and a leading edge to the wing and then a white or silver trailing edge to the wing. So this is a turkey vulture. And yet again, the adult Cooper's hawk decided to chase that vulture away. Also note that the turkey vulture is molting. You can see that the feather here has been dropped and the new one is growing in. And we'll end with one more juvenile red-tailed hawk. So again, note the dark patagio bars and the belly band, but no dark trailing edge and no red tail. 
And overall, juvenile red tails often look quite pale. You can see this one has a really pale head and throat, and they just don't have that outline to the wing like the adults do. And taking a look at the eBird checklist from the East Spit this morning, I had 52 species. And again, you won't be able to see the northern goshawk because it's marked as sensitive. And at Braddock Bay Park from the platform, we had 58 species today. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals today, we had 225 turkey vultures, 10 osprey, 48 bald eagles, so a really big flight of those, 19 northern harriers. For exhibitors, we had 214 sharpies, 8 coops, and 1 goshawk. For beautios, we had 1,896 broadwings and 105 red tails. We had one golden eagle, which was when Kim had gone over to the platform and I had stayed at the East Spit. I was going to wait till she got set up over there so we could keep the count running. And she got over there and she called me and said there was a golden eagle. Um, and I was able to position myself so I could look over towards the platform and get a look at it, although I didn't grab my camera so I couldn't get any photos. And for falcons, we had six kestrels and two peregrines for a total of 2,535 migrant raptors today. And that brings the season total to 39,360. The only new species for the season was the black-bellied plover, although if that tern ends up being something other than common tern, then that would also be new. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking cloudy with showers, high in the upper 40s, winds southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour, and a 60% chance of rain. So it's a good wind direction, but up on the lake shore, it's going to be uh, relatively light. But as you get farther south and west, the wind's actually stronger. So there will be winds to direct the birds up to the lake shore, um, but I think it will depend on how gloomy of a day it ends up being. Yesterday, they were forecasting that today would be quite gloomy with rain and it ended up being quite sunny. So, um, We'll see if that ends up happening tomorrow. If we have some sunshine, could turn into a nice flight. Uh, the other concern would be, since the wind is so light, there's the possibility of a lake breeze as the day warms up, although with the high only up around 50. Um, I'm not as concerned with that, but it's always a possibility when you have really light winds. So overall, I would expect light to moderate migration, but again, if the weather turns out to be better, then we could get a decent flight with the favorable wind direction. For Wednesday, it's looking cloudy with occasional rain showers, high 48, winds northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so that's a less favorable wind direction and would only expect light migration. For Thursday, it's looking cloudy with a slight chance of a rain shower, high in the low 50s, winds north at 5 to 10 miles per hour, so expect only light migration. All right, well, we made it to May, everyone's favorite birding month, and I think this will be a month of not getting enough sleep for me. Had a long day today, getting out at sunrise to the East Spit, and then being at the Hawk Watch all day after that. But what a spectacular day we had, getting those really close looks at the northern goshawk, and having a really big flight of broadwings and other species. So well worth it, and I hope that everyone can get out and do a lot of birding in the coming month as we hit the peak of not only the raptors, but the warblers and the songbirds and all those colorful goodies. So hope you can get out in the field soon, and I hope to see you out on the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch platform. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.